Ultraviolet. They offer quite a robust warranty program on their battery pack, which itself is a part of a high-performance electric drivetrain on the F77. But there are questions. Questions from naysayers, fence-sitters, keyboard warriors, enthusiasts, prospective buyers even. Questions like, how is the battery life affected? What are the factors involved? How is the real-world performance like? Now, today on Power Drift, we are going to take all of these questions and lay them to rest through a torture program that spans three chapters and one very brave F77. One lakh kilometers, that's how much this motorcycle has run, this very F77. And just to throw some numbers your way, an ICE doing this much distance would probably require 4.4 lakh rupees worth of fuel. The F77 on the other hand, absolutely zero. Now, Ultraviolet ran between 5 to 700 kilometers, charging it about four times a day. And when they send this motorcycle after a lakh kilometers to ARAI for a new range number of sorts, ARAI returned with about 304 kilometers of range. And they also said that the battery pack retained over 95% of its capacity. So obviously, the battery has gone through a lot through its course of testing. But what really affects it? First, charging cycles and the number of times you use boost charge to juice up the battery. Next up are the ambient conditions that impact battery performance. What else? There are actually five parameters using which ultraviolet engineered safety and performance into the battery. We know the F77 is proper fast, but out in the real world, you're restricted by speed limits, 80 or 100 kilometers per hour, and it's fair legal and safe. But right now, I am at their factory and we have access to their dyno. When we did our review, we managed a top speed of about 140 km per hour, but UV says that the motorcycle can do a whole lot more. What is that number? We find that out today. Ultraviolet claims that the top speed of the F77 is 152 km per hour, but out here on the dyno, we managed to see 154. So, 2 km per hour more than the actual claimed top speed. I think that's great. Now, let's talk about dyno testing. Through dyno testing, Ultraviolet ensures the drivetrain's operational safety before their motorcycle is actually put out on the road. And needless to say, it happens way before delivery. Dyno testing is a critical part of the manufacturing process and I'm glad I got to experience it today. The final test is about questions related to real-world performance and range. UV says the F77 will return a range of 307 kilometers and to test this, I am headed to Penuconda Fort.
just got back from Penukonda Fort and with that we close our testing circle. Now during these tests, the F77 performed really well and the battery and the motor showed little to no wear which is really nice. Now most of us know that this motorcycle is capable of impressive performance, that's no secret. But I don't think you know this, Ultraviolet actually extended their warranty on the battery pack from 1 lakh kilometers to 8 lakh kilometers. That's a lot of miles on the odometer and I'm sure not a lot of motorcyclists see this number on the odometer, especially as motorcyclists. But that shows the kind of confidence the brand has on its product. The motorcycle that I rode, the one with the camo livery, that's already clocked a lakh kilometers and I'm sure it can do a lot, lot more. But as far as the brand goes, this is just the beginning. Neeraj, who is the CTO and the co-founder of Ultraviolet Automotive. You wanted to talk about phones and this battery pack and that connection, please. In our case, we are actually designed, designing for the other extreme, which is how long can we make these motorcycles and the batteries last? Is it possible to get to 8 years, 10 years, right? And that's exactly what we've done. So the engineering principles that go behind managing thermals, electricals, safety um, and you know generally ensuring that it's very predictable mm. that's the same kind of engineering that's gone into this and uh, frankly we are pretty excited because to even run a hundred thousand kilometer test on not just one but an entire set of vehicles mm. and then see that what we've been engineering for is actually making sense and coming true that's pretty exciting for us so yeah what allows you to maintain battery health after such long testing cycles Every time we go talk about it from the point of view of fundamentals because if you have engineered everything perfectly right mm. and the battery is actually manufactured to those very strong constraints with the same precision every single whether it's a cell, whether it's uh, the BMS, whether it's the interconnects, the thermal management, the safety elements, they all have to work in sync to ensure that you know you're able to get consistency over time. Awesome. So a user. For example, an F77 user, how does that user sort of maintain battery in peak health? What does one need to do? In our case, we wanted it to be as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't ever have to worry about your battery pack. That's the idea. You shouldn't have to think, oh, am I going to lose range because of my actions? Because that's one of the concerns. Right. Yeah. And that comes from phones, right? Oh, that's Battery, battery, same, yes, same. Yeah. Yes, right. So we were like, it has to be simple. Mm. Do whatever you need to do. We've run the most aggressive Extreme, charge, yeah. discharge, yeah. riding conditions and even after all of that, that's the kind of range, the 304 validated IDC range that we got. Simplify battery tech for someone who's watching this video right now. Like what is battery tech? The electric vehicles are very different that way, right? Mm -hmm. um, with, when you're dealing with the kinds of capacities that we have, which is, you know, 7 kilowatt hour, 10 kilowatt hour, these are literally the largest battery packs on two wheelers that we have in Correct. India today. Yeah. Right. To be able to, you know, um, talk about the engineering aspects of it, I think we covered the thermal, electrical, all of these things. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, what you really care about is how your motorcycle performs, what kind of range you get. And that's the only thing that essentially matters, right, when you're riding a motorcycle, it's the handling, it's the performance. Correct. Right. So that's really what we've gotten right. Mm -hmm. And for anyone who's buying or thinking about an EV, these are things that they love and care about. And those are things that I think we would love to talk about. Yeah. And the battery in effect is meant to sort of power that. Mm -hmm. It's an enabler. It is not the end of it all. Mm -hmm. And so we've built the foundation to be very strong. And that's what you know I think is exciting for us.